Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. One absolutely central theme of Franz Kafka's short story in the penal colony is that of justice. And we might go a little bit further and say that the way that we're looking at justice, the way that Kafka is leading us to consider it in this scenario with these characters and particularly with this mode of execution that is called the machine, is by viewing justice as, you could say, paradoxical or incomplete or even as, in some respect, unjust and contestatory. There's a contradiction at the heart, not necessarily of justice per se as a concept, but certainly this implementation of it. And it is, if we're going to follow out that line of reasoning, we should always remind ourselves that we never really do encounter justice in this world with a capital J as something like a platonic form. You know, maybe if we're Platonists, we can contemplate that form of justice. But even Plato thinks that what we encounter within this world is never complete or perfect justice. And it's always materialized. It's always particularized. It's always within a certain system. And so Kafka uses this literary, you could say, device or setting of a penal colony to, to explore that and a particular mode, uh, as it turns out, an unjust mode of sentencing. So we should begin by thinking about two different senses of justice within the penal colony. So it is a penal colony, right? So it is a place of punishment to which people have been sent. They might have been soldiers or sailors. They might have been civilians. And now in the penal colony, they are assigned their tasks and they have to do the things that, that compromise the punishment from their, their home country. And there's, you know, some interesting things that are said about this in the course of the story. You know, the explorer uh, in the part where he says the explanation of the judicial procedure had not satisfied him, which we're going to come to in just a moment. Uh, Kafka says the explorer had to remind himself this was in any case a penal colony where extraordinary measures were needed and that military discipline must be enforced to the last. So we could say that there are some things within a judicial system, a system of not just, you know, set, passing sentence and, and examining things, but the penal system that follows after that, where maybe rights don't have to be respected to the same degree, or they can be narrowed, or they can be understood in, in ways that on the outside we would find to be, you know, violations. We say that once somebody has gone off to this, you know, to use a, a, a frame of, of a mind that comes from a different author, this archipelago of um, penal uh, institutions, systems, I'm thinking here about Solzhenitsyn and his uh, labeling the Gulag Archipelago. We can also talk about in our own time, the departments of corrections and all the other things associated with them in each of our states here in the United States and all the county jail systems. Those are places in which things are going to be done a bit differently. And they're done differently because you're dealing with those who have been convicted of some sort of crime. 
So is that unjust? Is there justice involved there? Maybe in order to keep prisoners from, you know, violating each other's rights, you have to be very harsh with them. So there's that. <clears throat> but there's another very important respect here as well. It's not just a place of the condemned. It's also a colony. So there's an entire community of those who are, quite frankly, stuck there. Some people may have decided to go to a penal colony away from their home country and endure you know, all, all the things involved with not just travel, but being in a place that's really deliberately out of the way. But not everybody would do that. And there's a great scene where they're talking about the uniform of the officer. So uh, he looked uncommonly limp, breathed with his mouth wide open and had tucked two fine ladies handkerchiefs under the collar of his uniform, right, to suck up the sweat. These uniforms are too heavy for the tropics, surely, said the explorer, instead of making some inquiry about the apparatus. And then the officer says, of course, washing his oily and greasy hands in a bucket of water that stood ready but they mean home to us. We don't want to forget about home. So there's this sense of being at a distance, being estranged from your, your home and being out there on this, what we might call a hardship tour that could go on for, for life. And there are not just officers and soldiers out there. There are also all sorts of other people. They mention the commandant is surrounded by a whole slew of ladies, presumably the wives, daughters, other relatives of the, the men who have been stationed there, some of whom <clears throat> apparently seem to have some sort of rank. So justice, both in the sense of being a penal colony itself and justice in the sense of a community is involved here. What we can ask is whether the machine and the commandant's old, seemingly popular ways of dealing with things now fallen out of favor are, are just or unjust. And presumably within this colony, although we don't get a lot of discussion of this, there would be a important distinction uh, when it comes to justice and injustice and when it comes to punishment. So there probably are some minor violations or infractions because, you know, if you think about the trouble that people get into, you can't just be executing everybody. You wouldn't have a colony left after a while. So presumably the new commandant is, you know, taking charge of many of these cases or perhaps the people who he delegates. And so there is non, you know, non-capital punishment, perhaps corporal punishment, perhaps other kinds of punishment that have to do with, you know, like spending time in a jail or doing extra work. We don't know because Kafka doesn't tell us in this story about the rest of what's happening in this colony. Then there's violations of what are called the commandments. And there is where the officer gets involved because the officer is, as he tells us a little bit later on, and again, we don't know whether he is an entirely um, reliable narrative, right? So, he says, um, here we go. This is how the matter stands. I have been appointed judge in this penal colony despite my youth, for I was the former commandant's assistant in all penal matters, and I know more about the apparatus than anyone. So presumably, if something is serious enough, it goes to this, this officer who has been there and is sort of the stand-in for the commandant. And in that case, it's going to be capital punishment. And we can ask, well, is, is that a, a fair response to some of these uh, infractions? For example, the case of this, this man who is condemned, who uh, did you know, something wrong, right? He, he uh, is, has been, here we go. Um, you wanted to have the case explained. It's quite simple. 
Like all of them, a captain reported to me this morning that this man who had been assigned to him as a servant and sleeps before his door had been asleep on duty. It's his duty, you see, to get up every time the, uh, the hour strikes and salute the captain's door. Not an exacting duty and very necessary since he has to be a sentry as well as servant and must be alert in both functions. Last night, the captain wanted to see if the man was doing his duty. He opened the door as the clock struck two. There was the man curled up asleep. He took his riding whip and lashed him across the face. Instead of getting up and begging pardon, the man caught hold of his master's legs, shook him and cried, throw that whip away or I'll eat you alive. That's the evidence. The captain came to me an hour ago. I wrote down his statement and a Ended the sentence to it. Then I had the man put in chains. That was all quite simple. And so, you know, this is, this is quite extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, we have this case of somebody who's supposed to be alert in his duties, and yet he's supposed to wake up every hour or be awake every hour and salute, do this totally absurd thing of saluting the, the door. The captain apparently wants to catch this person, comes out, whips him in the face, and then the, the person, you know, the man responds to it in a way that shows that he doesn't like being whipped. That, by being reported, is a capital crime in this, this colony. So, you know, already here we can say this does not seem to be particularly just, but perhaps we can look back and say, well, you know, it is a penal colony. They have to have strict discipline. This person is a prisoner who's been assigned some, some tasks. They did the wrong thing. Whatever we decide on that, we can also think about the justice or injustice of the sentence. What is this? inscription upon the body of whatever rule, whatever commandment, whatever infraction they committed. So, and the, the, the inscription is across a narrow band of the body. The rest of the body is inscribed with all of this extra stuff essentially there to produce pain. And the person is, is tied down, naked, pierced by multiple needles. They make, you know, more than one pass going deeper and deeper into the flesh over the course of six hours while people are, are looking on and, you know, little jets of water are washing the blood away. This is pretty horrific pain. Then uh, at a, a time of, you know, six or so hours, the person understands the sentence that is being inscribed upon their body. The commandment that they broke is being tattooed effectively without ink on them. And supposedly there is this dawning of understanding or enlightenment that's taking place. The person uh, sort of like as the, the officer says, purses their mouth as if they're listening, but what they're really listening to is the pure piercing of their skin. And then a spike goes through their head and they're killed. It's, it's said that, you know, this could take 12 hours, you know, the machine would by itself would take 12 hours to kill them. Instead, once they've attained that understanding of what the rule is that they broke, they're killed and they are tumbled into a pit. So this is the machine. This is what the former commandant brought about as this new innovative punishment for people. And you might say, well, this sounds horribly inhumane. And that's exactly what the explorer thinks. But the commandant and the officer in the time that they were building this, devoting all these resources to it with many people, according to the officer, flocking to see these executions, thought that this was an, a, a way of embodying justice that had not been done before and that was superior to other ways of sentencing people and imposing capital punishment upon them. So this is a representation of justice, which I think we can see Kafka and the Explorer and, and we think to be unjust. Almost some of you think that this is actually a, a good idea. We also find out that there's no due process involved whatsoever by design. 
Why not? Well, we find out that the prisoner does not know their sentence yet. Why not? Because they will find out their sentence later on. So here we go. Um, he tells us that the, the explorer asks him, how, how is this going to, to work? And he says that, uh, ah, here, doesn't, the, doesn't the, the prisoner know their sentence? No. He doesn't know the sentence that has been passed on him? No. But there's no point in telling him he'll learn it on his body. He'll, he'll be informed of the sentence as the sentence is occurring. So the sentence itself is, you could say, both means and ends in a, uh, a way that might be attractive to some who love consistency. But this is, you know, this goes against many of the rules of justice that we have. And he says that um, he had no chance to make any sort of defense. He says, surely he knows he's been sentenced. No, not that either. Then he can't know whether his defense was effective. The officer says, he had no chance of putting up a defense. And then the explorer says, but he must have had some chance of defending himself. And this is where he goes into his, well, I'm the, the person in charge here. And uh, it, there's no point in allowing him to make a defense. Why not? He says, if I'd first called the man before me and interrogated him, things would have gotten into a confused tangle. He would have told lies. Had I exposed these lies, he would have backed them up with more lies and so on and so forth. As it is, I've got him and I won't let him go. Is that quite clear now? So the, the presumption there is that the prisoner would simply put up a bunch of lies based on more lies as the defense. And why, why does the officer view it in that way? Well, he tells us that his essential guiding principle is that guilt is never to be doubted. If somebody is accused, they're guilty. They must have done something or they wouldn't have been accused. We'll impose this sentence on them, which then makes it seem that the machine might be, you know, even assuming that if the, the machine was a, a fair way of doing things, big assumption there, might be in its application unjust. What if the officer has somebody who is sent to them and the report itself is false and so they use the wrong commandment well then this horrible suffering that is imposed on somebody and the understanding that's supposed to result from it are essentially meaningless aren't they so this is a a big problem <clears throat> interestingly the officer has one further reason why it's okay for him to do this, this sort of thing. He says that my guiding principle is this guilt is never to be doubted. And then he makes a direct comparison, which shows us that he knows exactly how things work in other places. Other courts cannot follow that principle. Why not? Well, because they consist of several opinions and have higher courts to scrutinize them. That is not the case here, or at least it was not the case in the former commandments, commandant's time, right? So there's no disagreement possible, although there is now with the new commandant, and there's no oversight, there's no higher courts. This is it. There's no appeals process. There's nobody to provide any, you know, questioning or, or oversight or review. So again, we see that this procedure here, is it really even appropriate to a place that's a prison colony? Or is this a, a type of injustice masquerading as superior justice? That's a question that we can ask. And this is all brought to a crux in what happens in the final part of the story, which is the sentencing of the officer himself by himself. When he tries to convince the explorer, you need to intervene with me with this new commandant and make him, you know, go back to the old ways. You stop his interference. Make sure that he realizes that this is just, that he's wrong about justice, that we are right about justice. The we being a singular I 
of the officer and the maybe the ghost of the commandant, right? When the, the explorer says, what you're doing is inhumane and unjust, and I am not going to give a good report about this, as a matter of fact, I think that you are, are you know, doing this, this awful thing, uh, and I will report it. The officer places himself in the machine, and he uses as the, the template for the calligraphy, be just. So what is this implying? This is implying that he has violated the commandment to be just and that there has been some sort of review process. He put it in the hands of the explorer who said, you are not being just. And so the, the very article, the, the, the instrument, the machine that has been tattooing, again, without ink, all of these, these commandments onto people's bodies before they're killed is now going to be turned against the person who has been administering these things and he's going to suffer his own sentence. It's also symbolic, of course, that the machine breaks to pieces in the process, does not give him this enlightenment, but does pierce him through the skull and kill him in a way that turns it into mere execution without any of the other things that he says are going to happen. Of course, we could say that the officer doesn't need to have this, this inscription tattooed on his flesh in order to realize that he was violating this commandment of being just because he's the one who's carried out the sentence. But he is deprived, perhaps justly, of his enlightenment. So justice is not something simple, nor is its opposite injustice in this story in the penal colony.